We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO. And I'm Money Moses, by the way, and we crank content every damn day. Hey, man, you know my favorite guys here, man. Hey, man. Hey, what's going on, Charleston? Oh, man, not too much. Hey, man. Hey, man, you know, uh, hey, I'm just going to tell you, man, uh, Boy, I be watching you, man, and you motivate me, man. The way you your you, your work ethic is different than most, bro. Yeah, and I always tell you that. You know what I mean? Like, how do you find the energy, man? Uh, I ain't got nothing to do with my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I done done everything. Yeah, yeah. Everything I ever want to be in life, I grew up and became it. Yeah, so yeah. yeah now I don't know what to do. So, so, so when 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 I see you and you just up in the morning early. And bam, you 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 off to the races. You come on, and, and, and people in the comments be like, "Man, you, this better than watching TV." When I watch y'all, yeah. Uh, well, I'm up early because uh, I gotta get my daughter um, to school. Yeah, and my son keep wrecking his cars. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I can't lay around uh, and, and and be in bed. And then my wife go to go to she go to work early. For uh, sure. Yeah, so yeah, I don't want to be left in the bed like Al Bundy, you know, with my hand and my britches lonely. Yeah. So, yeah, I jump up and get in the car, and, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know me, man. Uh, I'm always watching what's going on. It was a, it, it did something I had already said I was going to ask you about Alec Baldwin. Two people shot on the set. Yeah. Uh, 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 they were doing a movie. Uh-huh. Two people got shot. The gun supposed to had uh, Blank. blanks in it. But it ended up having uh, bullets. Uh, real bullets in it. Master P said this wouldn't have happened uh, if he would have been on that movie set to him because uh, in the hood they practice gun safety. Uh, yeah, that's a murder they go get away with. Uh, we don't know what Hollywood do. We know Hollywood do some uh, some strange things. Yeah, um, and yeah, that was a jet. You know, uh, that was an execution. Yeah, you wow. can't make me believe that was an accident. No, it wouldn't. Yeah, no, there ain't, ain't shit like that happening on the movie set. What the? Yeah, I never heard of it happening, but maybe years ago one time. Bruce Lee? Bruce Lee? Bruce Lee? Was it his son? Brandon Lee. Brand, yeah. yeah. But listen, uh, yeah, no, man. Uh, Dick Cheney shot that motherfucker out when they was So hunting. did. Yeah. Damn you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now they lying. Uh, yeah, they done killed two people, uh, and they needed them people dead. And yeah, they put them in the movie so they can yeah they'll tell us anything. Yeah, I believe it might have was mm-hmm. it one or two. I, I know that one of them got shot. I don't know if, if did both of them die. I think. I think one of them did. One of them died. One of them died. Yeah, it yeah. it could have been two. Both of them got shot. Yeah, I try not to pay attention to white folk news. Yeah, <laughs> why not? Uh, because paying attention to what white folks do distract you from what niggas need to be doing. Whoa, that's good one. I like that. Yeah, yeah, two white folks dying, uh, 40 niggas died. But you, we worried about the two niggas accidentally shot. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, nah, I got a 12-year-old kid accidentally shot himself, and he got a limp. Uh, so, no, nah, oh. I, I, uh, I don't cry with white folk. Okay. Yeah, when, when the Sandy Hook school shooting happened, uh, I ain't cry with them. Oh, people. the trench coat. Uh, I'm yeah, yeah, when, they, when, that, when that, yeah, I don't cry with white folk. Wow, wow. Yeah, I cry for him. I don't cry with him. Yeah. Yeah, 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 no. Nah. And, and and like I said, I think it was earlier I, I heard that uh what they they got Fetty Wap. They locked him up. Yeah, he got 100 keys. They had him with 100? 100 keys of cocaine, fentanyl, and hair run. Damn. Say, listen, if I were him, I'd tell. How he got all that? Shit, nigga can't rap. Yeah, nigga, yeah, nigga. Uh, and then, you know, uh, you know, they say the man in the in the land with the one eye is king. Wow. Yeah, yeah he a one eyed nigga. So, yeah. so he yeah, so he was the one that run it. Yeah, that's what the more African proper <laughs> motherfuckers say. Now nah, you know he was a you know he was a puppet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He know. had a big name, so they pinned it. He the only name they mentioned. That's the only one. Yeah, yeah. And it had to be more. It's always more too. It's always more with that man. Yeah, man. And I and I was hanging with his brother, man. Uh, uh, down when I was fucking with Champ Nim in Atlanta. For real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was fucking with his brother. Big, you know, big, yeah, big fat player, motherfucker. Big cool, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. Uh, but now, nah, man. Uh, yeah, he might as well just tell on somebody. Telling is is cool now. Is it cool? Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, 
not having loyalty, uh, being dishonorable, uh, those are the new good traits of street guys. So, yeah, man, tell. Yeah, Freddie Wap, if you can hear this, and yeah, tell on whoever you need to tell on and get back home to them kids. We'll still listen to your music. Yeah, 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 we'll still listen to your music. Man, so uh, it was uh, it was a, a few cases, man, where – uh, we I looked at some things that were going on in the news. Uh, NBA young boy, he's home That's now. That some bitch home. I'm he mad. I'm mad. He, he, they got him in Utah somewhere. Man, they hate him. He didn't come. He didn't. He did not come back to his hometown. Say, say he this. wasn't going he back can't. down to mess with you, lose Allen. Say listen. What do you mean he came? That's in the probation. Say I mean, listen. Oh, they, they yeah. said they don't want him back in the city. No. I'm mad than a motherfucker. What? That NBA young boy is free. I'm starting a petition to have him locked back up. What? Why? He's a he's a danger to society. The boy got herpes. It's well known the boy got herpes, and he promote gun violence to black children, and he try to be gangster. Right? This is what I'm mad in the motherfucker about. All us had to go do years. We had to go do seven nine months and twenty three hour lockdown. Yeah, man, we had to fight Mexicans. We had to fight niggers. Men, and we wanted to be there, some of us. How is it these niggas can talk so much about killing but can't do euros in jail? Wow. Yeah. I thought that's what made you who you are, nigga. That's when you got Being to able to jail, nigga, how you going to be who you are? Talk about mm -hmm. all this killing in 979 songs, but you can't do time. You talk killer talk, but you can't do this killer's time. Yeah. All his fans. We need him free. But y'all quit talking about killing people then. Because you niggas don't know what this come with. Yeah, yeah. He need to do about seven years. Pooh Shiesty need to do about 12 years. Go Yayo need to get about 15 years. Uh, who else in trouble? They need to put all the rappers away for at least eight to 15 years. And when them boys come home, they going to be some of the best well-behaved, mountable, respectful citizens that our community could have. And I know you ain't lying because Bobby Smurda, you ain't heard about him doing no Bobby Smurda running around shaking his ass. Uh, he got an arch <laughs> in his back that he can't get rid of. Uh, say the nigga got some, some, he got some feminine sex appeal now. He ain't the same Bobby Schmurda that was jumping on the table in front of them white boys with the hot boys yeah, shooting yeah, the gun. Yeah, yeah. Say that nigga got a hey, he got a hey, he got his foot twitched to the side like them girls take the picture. What Ply say in that song? He walk around the corner like he bow legged when he been in the corner. That's how he stand and dance now. Yeah, like them bow legged hoes walk around the corner. That boy done been fucked. They, got a hold they done got him. Yeah, yeah. Somebody they might not got him, but they they yeah, they got him. Yeah. Somebody might have brushed that dick up against him and he didn't fight. Yeah, they told yeah, yeah. Once some somebody got it. somebody, y'all see him, just check him out. He ain't yeah, gangster no more. No, uh, no, nah, nah, he real cool now. That's what I'm talking about. Wherever they send him, that's where they need to send all rappers. And we then, we need dancing rappers back. That nigga been dancing ever since he came home, ain't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He been a dancing mother. He the new MC Hammer. Oh, in yeah, modern Bobby, day time. Bobby Schmurda is the new MC Hammer. Boy, say, and he the new Elvis Presley. Don't so, nobody shake their hips like that, but Bobby... <laughs> Say, you need man, to get him on her. Yeah, yeah. I need to get him on yeah, there, man. Yeah, he yeah. a wild boy. They need to put him in the Vogue magazine. Oh, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. That, Bobby, that's yeah, yeah, that'll take him to another level. Ugly and black as he is, he get in there with them poses in the Vogue magazine. They'll pick him up around the world. He'll be the new Grace Jones. I believe you. Yeah, I believe you. Yeah. Now, you hitting it on the nail today, man. Yeah, man. I say, I say, I say, somebody got that boy. I'm sick of this nigga here. He ain't dropped no new rap song. None. And yeah, this Not nigga, yet. yeah, this nope. nigga, he really want to. He want to be Instagram model. I think that's what the boy want to be. I think they gave him a lot of money when he came home. I seen the Migos flew up and gave him. Bobby. Man, they gave him a potload of money when he came home. Yeah, because they, they, they say he took some time for the other. Yeah, boy. he didn't tell nobody, but they don't know what what that boy had to do. While he was in there. No, they don't know that. Yeah, yeah. For him to be behaving how he behaving, uh, whatever correctional facility he came from, I recommend everybody go there. Whatever jailhouse yeah. they had Bobby Schmurter locked up in, they need to send Go Yayo there. 
NBA young boy need to go there. Pooh Shiesty. Uh, Pooh Shiesty. And that's my dog. Yeah, they need to send little Pooh up there and a whole bunch of more of them other motherfuckers. Them niggas that, uh, them Chicago boys. Yeah, they yeah, they, they, they all need to go there and come out dancing and we'll feel more safer. I yeah. feel safe with a nigga dancing like Bobby Schmurter. Around this motherfucker with no gun in his hand. Yeah, he chilling. Yeah, like a motherfucker. He ain't doing it like 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 he was before he left. They were talking about with the hot nigga and, and, and yeah. it was Chewy with the hot nigga. Like a, to, to when I shot, they nigga. were dancing in that video. Oh, they but they was it was not the, like he, 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 he had a straight back then, mm -hmm. and his shoulders was broad and his feet was shoulder width apart. Now he got an arch in his back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, boy, I got an arch in his back now. Yeah, you know how when you you know how when that girl in doggy style position. I already position, know what you were talking about. Yeah, and she got that arch mm -hmm. in her back, and she stretched out like a cow. I mean, yep. like a cat. Yeah, that's how he is now. Wow, nigga, Man. stretched them out. So, so I now I was watching some. Uh, really, when it got back to me, you had called a warden. Is what it, it, it was being told. No, me. I ain't no, I'm just no telling one. you. When I it, it got back to me that you called a warden on a boy. Yeah, was it Crip Max partner or something? Yeah, baby, baby. Baby, OG Baby Snap. So baby Snap. 55 Street Crip. They say he represents 55 Street, 57 Street, 58th Street, rolling 50 Crip. They say he a bad motherfucker. But what happened? How did he, he ended up, what, did he threaten you or how, what, what happened? Well, I lied and said he threatened me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't say, I didn't lie on the oath. Okay, so did he, did you, he had a cell phone or something? Yeah, he had a cell phone. I'm I'm assuming he got it through his ass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm not, I, stuff I, in. You can't make me believe a guard would bring an inmate a cell phone. So he snuck it through his ass. And so, how did you end up getting sideways with him? What what happened? Well, I was getting into it with I was picking on uh five five crib. Yeah, five five crib. I was picking on him. Yeah, he hurt my feelings online. Yeah, okay. I was fond of him, and he didn't know I liked him. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought he was like the ses like the cookie monster on Sesame Street Street. Uh so I was fond of the boy. I thought he was a nice retarded boy. Uh 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 like radio. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I thought he was like radio. Damn. I ain't bullshit. I didn't yeah, yeah, I'm think yeah, I'm thinking he like radio. Uh and they just letting him play Crip. Yeah, I didn't know he yeah. was a real motherfucker Crip. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. just yeah, yeah. In today's time you couldn't make me believe a human could talk like that. Yeah, he talked real different. Man, a human, I could, you can make me I believe. believe what, I, I, I tried to, I I didn't tried know, to understand. I it. didn't know humans could rewire their brain. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know humans could rewire their brain to make a two or five. Yeah, I'm going to the stove. I'm going five to stove. <laughs> Damn. I didn't know a, a human's brain could be Man done like that Yeah 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 yeah. I thought you would have to Man. be on drugs To do that You know uh, Enubricated Or something So I'm picking on this motherfucker Cause I really Like a girl that like a boy in school She yeah. pick on him yeah. You know Poke him in back of the head So that's how we're doing him online Cause I'm Debo in social media world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't, I'm Mayweather. Can't nobody whoop me online. No, That's no. why I like to stay online with the argument. Nigga no, no. whoop me offline. Yeah, but on that line. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why I like to fight online because nigga can't whoop me online. No, I, I've seen you yeah. uh, take a many of them out. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm whooping him online. I don't know OG Baby Snaps got a phone in prison. I don't know this nigga can see me on YouTube. He watching me on YouTube. OG baby snaps, unbeknownst to me. So unbeknownst to me, baby snaps call Five Five Crip and say, "Say this nigga said this about you. Yeah, this nigga talked about you, and he said this, this, and that." So, Mister Five Five Crip, uh, Crip Mac, come to YouTube and make a video about me, and he said that the big homie. From the pen, baby OG snaps call and said uh, this about Custerson White. So I got mad in the motherfucker. He didn't call me Charleston. He gave me a name. Custerson. Yeah, nigga, I'm the nigga getting niggas names. You can't give me no name, retard. Yeah, nigga, yeah. you can't pick on me like I'm you. Yeah, no, nah, you, yeah, <laughs> nigga, I'm mad in the motherfucker. You trying to talk to me like I'm you. So, uh, yeah, I'm thinking, well, how can I get these niggas? Yeah, they don't know who they fucking with. 
Yeah, yeah, I play. I'm a low down, dirty motherfucker. They they shoot people. I call the police. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm way more better than them because okay. they'll stop shooting if you call the police. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I know how to get them to behave. So, uh, so then after he make the video, I make another video. So, I guess OG Baby Snaps couldn't take it no more because I was rag dogging. I was rag darling goddamn Crip Mac. He can't fuck with me. Yeah, I already I seen that. I got people telling me all this personal information in his circle. Yeah. They telling me everything about the boy. Yeah, his right. mama liked white boys. She was a dope fiend hoe, run off with a motorcycle white boy, and he took her down to Atlanta and fuck her real good and keep her down there, and they send Crip Mac back home in L.A. because he couldn't do good down in the South because wow. he couldn't read. Boy can't read boy well. Boy can't read nothing. Yeah, yeah, boy can't read well. So his mama didn't stay with him. They sent him home. That's why he got a, a thing for homeless people, because he was homeless. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, fuck the homeless. Yeah, yeah, everybody I know <laughs> homeless want to be homeless. But listen, so let me stay on track. So OG Baby Snaps turns off the light in the cell. He make it pitch dark. Inconsiderate motherfucker. He ain't in no single cell. He got a roommate, and yeah. he got the roommate in the dog with him. So they done cut the goddamn lights off. Ain't no telling God knows who, what, what they doing in the dark in prison. Wow. With a cell phone. They probably watching porn, <laughs> doing shit. Yeah, ain't no telling what two niggas in the dark in prison with a cell. Ain't no telling what sick shit they doing. Yeah. So, so Baby Snaps cut the lights off and start making marks, remarks toward me. Yeah, calling me a homosexual. Because I told him... He must, he watching me from prison. He ain't got no business dibbling in the free world. A nigga in prison ain't got no business with his eyes past that fence. That's it. Yeah, no, he got to look at the fence. If he can look back home, he ain't doing time. No, 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 no. No, they need to put pay phones back off in prison and check everybody's asshole and get them cell phones <laughs> out that motherfucker. Yeah, no, man. So Baby Snaps make a, what, a 20 minute video. Calling me a snoover sexual. Like I'm, he telling me about cheeseburger suck dick and tic tac sleep with this. I don't know nothing about them gang gang niggas. I don't know nothing about them nigga nigga. So, yeah, I say, well, how dumb can they be? So, I don't know this is baby snaps in the thing, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so the next morning I wake up, I look in the comment section of the video, and some dumb motherfucker said, baby snaps. I know that's you. Boy, you can't fool me. I know your voice, Baby Snaps. So that's how I knew it was Baby Snaps. Because oh, somebody say, I know that. That's Baby Snaps. Snaps. OG Baby Snaps. I say, boy, look at these motherfuckers. Just self-incriminate themselves. Yeah. So what do a nigga like me do who hate gang members? You go to the harshest listen, resort. Listen, listen, listen. It's my dream to put a nigga in jail. Some niggas wake up. And on Friday nights, they going to the club to knock a nigga out. They pride theyself in whooping niggas. It's some niggas wake up on Saturday, get dressed, they playing on fucking plenty holes that night. I want to put niggas in jail. I want to put the gangster niggas in jail because, boy, they seem to get together when they get to jail. Some yeah. of the best things that ever happen to a black man is jail. Yeah. He be the best man he can be in jail. Yeah. He go to getting his push up. Yeah. He learned how to eat right so the muscles can sit right. Yeah. He started writing letters home, thinking about the wrong he done done because he needed this bitch to send him some money. Yeah. So he started apologizing for things he should have been apologizing for so he can get that $100 for the month. Then he started calling mama, talking to mama a little bit more. Now the kids can get a hold of him. Kids can't get a hold of him when he's free. No. Can't nobody find this nigga when he's free. Now he telling the kids how to do good in school. Now he telling his little brother. Now he want to try to put the family together. Then he pick up that Quran. There it is. Then he grab that Bible. You can't beat him every Sunday getting baptized at the Christian service. You can't miss him every Friday with the Jumar Asalamu Alaikum. Yeah. He doing his five prayers a day. He ain't fucking. He ain't jacking off. He ain't doing nothing. I mean, he the best. He, his spirit, and he come out looking good and give them six months after they out of jail or prison. The Bible still, the Quran still on the nightstand. They ain't touched that Quran. They ain't been calling mama as much. They don't sit and talk to mama. 
the things they were saying in the letter, they ain't saying in person. Mm. They ain't doing nothing that they said they was going to do. They got all these plans, that all these millionaire dreams, and all them niggas flop. Wow. So here you are. You got baby snaps in there with a cell phone. He should be trying to get his life together. He fucking around with internet shit in prison. Wow. Fucking around on YouTube and go so far. Now, normally niggas in prison got the cell phone taking care of business. Called and talking to the baby. Mm -hmm. Talking to the woman. Encouraging her. On the phone jacking off with a bitch. Mm -hmm. Making transactions. Talking to the lawyer. They ain't on their bullshit. Taking videos. Jeopardizing everybody on this unit. Because you want to be seen, nigga, in the dark. Wow. So, rather than me saying, man, fuck them niggas. No, I said, fuck them niggas. Hey, yeah, I know how to get them <laughs> niggas. Yeah, these niggas keep ignoring the fact that I'm a community activist. Yeah. Well documented. A youth advocate. Law abiding citizen. Nigga, I don't play by street rules. I abandon that shit. I pay taxes. I'm an election judge during the election. I'm the last nigga to turn the votes in in Tarrant County. I'm nominated to be a, a elected official, a precinct chair. I teach at college universities. Why would I let a nigga in prison trick me? Why would I let a nigga in the streets trick me to play by the rules they losing by? I get it. Why would I play by the rules they losing by? Ain't no nigga won by them rules that they play by. Nigga, I'm over here playing by the rules where you win. Mm -hmm. If you play by these rules, you win. Because these rules is defined as right, not wrong. So, you niggas doing wrong, speaking against a nigga that's living right. Say, listen, Department of Corrections, and I'm going to do it publicly. Because I want to show people that it's okay to report crimes. It's okay to report gang members. So what I keep telling these niggas, I'm willing to die, kill, and go to jail for what I say and what I believe. They just willing to kill for what they believe. They don't want to die, and them bitch-ass niggas don't want to go to jail. So I win, nigga. I'm willing to do all three for what I'm speaking about. They want me to take the element of calling the police out of my defense mechanism. And I see it keep the bad boys away. Ladies, if he whooping you, call the police. If your mama getting jumped on, call the police. If your neighbor house getting broke in, call the police. That's your element of defense against these bad guys who want to silence us with the no snitching shit. So that's why the young girls are so silent with being molested because you got a perverted motherfucker that uses the culture of no snitching and put that down on the little girl to stay silent. Same when the little boy getting fucked in the ass. So you better not snitch on me. That's real. Come on, my nigga. That's real. So I put another one. Let me catch another prison nigga on, on social media. You niggas ain't doing domestics is operating, taking care of business. You bitch ass penitentiary niggas. That's why you 85% of you niggas is back in prison within five years after being released. Feel good ass niggas. Domino playing ass niggas. Pick up a book. Put YouTube down, nigga. You can't do no time, nigga. You too busy trying to do it out here. You niggas done got weak. Learn how to make a knife, nigga. Wow, that's what they usually do. Shame. See, the Mexicans do. The niggas don't. That's right. The niggas is pussyfooting, playing grab ass fucking punks, slamming domino, playing spades, jacking off on a motherfucker woman who don't want to be jacked off on. Kill that's it. what the niggas be doing. Weak ass niggas. But they so goddamn bad. All you got to do is say, I'm calling the police and watch what a nigga do. Say, that's listen, so listen, my woman heard me tell some women that one time. We fur got together. We newlyweds. She did me like that one time. I ain't going no motherfucking world. 911. I got up, got to moving. You hear me? <laughs> say, I got up, got to moving. Say, man, what? Say, you on the whoa, whoa, man? I, what the fuck? 
<laughs> got up and got to moving. <laughs> so I know what, say, listen, if you threaten a motherfucker and they say, I'm on the phone with 911, and you say, bitch, I don't give a fuck about 911, and 911 hear you, you just got a felony for interference with a 911 call. That's intimidation. Wow. See, niggas don't know shit. Niggas, I studied law, and you niggas want to play with me. I went, I'm, it's, it's documented. I studied law. I work on laws. I'm going to keep beating these niggas because they can't think past their emotions. Wow. That's Charleston White, man. That's good stuff, man. Say, man, yeah, yeah. Um, so, Crip Mac, uh, is that one of the reasons why he uh, called and told uh, that boy – Adam twenty two. Uh, yeah, Custer, yeah. Don't put right? him on the don't, show. Don't, don't well, you, well, you this, can interview anybody, but not that Custer. Well, this I'm, what this what they don't want to admit. Did nobody show that nigga how to trademark his name till I said something about trademarking his name? Oh, so his, they, they his, done it. His name was open to be trademarked when I looked into it. His name was open to be copywritten when I looked into it. After your show, they got on it. They got right on it. Notice now he got a shirt with his little big head, big head on it now. He didn't have that before I started telling him. He got the, he getting millions of views. He only charging $200 for interviews. You getting millions on some of the biggest platform in the world. Nigga, you charging $200? I checked him about that. Now he went up to 1000 I told him what he's supposed to be doing. He got a bunch of dumb motherfuckers around him. Didn't nobody tell me, Crip Mac. So I'm insulting you, nigga, so you can pay attention to me while I give you this game, nigga. Wow. You won't take it nowhere else. I got to insult you, nigga, to show you what you, they fucking over you, nigga. The white boy, no, every white fucker fucking over you, nigga. Get your money, sucker. Until I started telling him that. He didn't know what to do. He didn't know. Game related, not gang related. Game applied means elevation. Proper instructions motivate people. It's just crazy how you had to, I mean, it's crazy because you helping him. At the same time where he feels like he being hurt, which is... Well, I wasn't hurt. hurting him. Uh, I wasn't trying to hurt him. I was really... I was dropping game, you know, dropping something down on the ground for the hungry hound. Uh, but I insulted him because he insulted me. So I was being petty. Yeah, I was being wrong. Yeah, yeah, I didn't have a good heart and a right heart when I was doing it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're a retard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm wrong in a motherfucker with all my intellectual abilities talking to a nigga like that with a rewired brain and his mama abandoned him and his daddy abandoned him and his mama fucking a white man. But why do you think the other bloggers or the other interviewers or the people that's in his camp, why wouldn't nobody else tell this guy about these opportunities? They don't know, homie. They're gangbangers. And the white boys, that platform that they're getting on, they ain't going to tell him they using him. Nigga, they probably getting 50000 off of him. So they ain't going to tell him nothing. They ain't going to tell him nothing. The niggas that's on there with the white boy ain't going to whisper in his ear. They ain't going to say nothing. Say, man, it went two years before somebody whispered in my ear, trademark your name. Two years. Two years. So you know how much money I done lost, how much pe money people done made off my name? Yeah, yeah. They doing. I'm watching them do to him what they done to me, and nobody saying nothing to him. And I'm saying, come on, man. That's 100. Come Period. on, man. Period. I got people like Hassan Campbell, Infomars, or uh, Say Cheese TV, Vlad TV. They give me game behind the scene. Yeah. So it ain't for me to keep it to myself. Mm-hmm. It ain't for me to keep it to myself. But that was a that was a lot that was so, a good that no, was a good pass. You to, put in, you put out the right way because like I said, they, they ain't not gonna get it if you talk to him the right way. Like I said, okay, if you tell him right to him right now, call him and say try, try make a name. He not gonna do it. No, so you had to give it to yeah, him. Yeah, nigga, yeah, ugly motherfucker, get you some bobbleheads. So so you That's ugly motherfucker, get you some bobbleheads, nigga. You know, so throwing shit out there at him, nigga. If you don't trademark your name in three weeks, I won't get it. Yeah, that was on. Raise here. your prices up, nigga. I ain't, I'm, they paying me two thousand dollars. You went on Cam Capone for two hundred dollars. He paid me two thousand, a thousand dollars an hour. One of the most boringest goddamn interviews I ever done. Boy, I was long drawn out, boring motherfucker. Man, I but I had two thousand dollars. I got a thousand before the interview even jumped off, wow. and before we even pushed play to start the record, I got another thousand right there. Wow, wow, but. 
dope interview. I've been watching it. Oh, uh, you, you, hey, that that interview is, is nice, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. That nigga Charles and a bad motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 you can't deny that. Yeah, they be trying to deny it. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, just captivating and mesmerizing with truth. Yeah. Uh, uh, unadulterated, uh, unapologetic truth. Yeah, I, that's been the whole game for me. Whenever, whenever I see you, I know already you can't deny that this guy is talented and what he's saying is going to help people from generations from now. Yeah, people people are gonna see this and it can evoke change. I already know that. Yeah, but if you can't understand that, like I told you before, some people not gonna see it because they on a, they ain't on a level to understand. Mm -hmm. it. And, and let me just say this: I'm not trying to help black people. I seen that. I, I, we, I, I don't give AD, a fuck AD about AD black say, people. Ad and, and we gonna get on that. I care about AD black children. Ad said that you 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 know he listened to you. I don't. I didn't even know him until like I Me said. Neither. Till he said he was gonna set you up. <clears throat> then he recanted somewhat the statement. It's real confusing how those guys are. Well, they you got know, a, they got a lot of backlash. Anywhere you look on anywhere with that video of him saying he go set me up, they got complete backlash. More black people who hate me say, how can this white boy be leading a conversation about what's best for our communities against a black man? And these two black guys are speaking against a black man to this white man. That's how he set it up. He knew what he was doing. Nigga, that made them niggas look so they daddies and everybody, they granddaddies, they uncles, everybody is ashamed of a black man that'll sit at the table with a white man and talk about another black man. Everybody, everybody. is ashamed of that kind of shit. Why the white man laughing? Yeah, I, yeah. I wanted to listen to it because he, he said, he said at first he said he, he didn't mean it, but he but did mean let, it. Let, let, let's listen to that. My spirit, listen, uh, listen, my spirit showed Charleston me. White. Charleston White. That's the Hold one on. person. And Crit Mac has been understanding about me interviewing multiple rappers that are clearly uh, people that don't get along with him. I agree. I don't want you to interview a nigga either. Why? Who is this person? He just, he just talks shit about everybody, bro, especially with gangs and all type of shit. Mm. I have had some That nigga random... come here, I'm going to set him up. That nigga yeah, come here, yeah, I'm going to set him up. right there. Mm -hmm. He's saying it. this on camera, so he know he really mean it. That nigga say he's saying this on camera, so you know he really mean it. Don't bring him Don't bring him here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, see, don't bring him here. Don't bring him here. So hey. let, me, let me show you. They reached out to me multiple times before this even happened. My spirit says somebody in that place attached to that'll set you up for something. I hadn't had beef with California yet. No, okay. You see what I'm saying? So they so far from the South, they don't know about the spirit of the man. Mm. He's, they say like, it, they don't know nothing about the spirit of the man, let alone in spirit and in truth. Man, that's why I think I can't be touched, nigga. I'm walking by spirit. You, you, you see what I'm saying? So my spirit showed me. So I said, no. So when I done the Vlad TV interview, when they said I couldn't, no, matter of fact, that's when they said I couldn't come to L.A. I yeah. done, the, I, I, come on now. So I started to stop through then. I said, no, nah, they, they, these niggas, yeah, they killed Biggie out here. Wow. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they used the Muslims and the police to kill Biggie out here. They set niggas up. California is known for that. So, nigga, I ain't a fool. But one thing I know about niggas in California they left their state and spread it out through the country and made a impression upon children. Okay. They didn't impress the men. When they went back to California, they ain't been bad since they made the boys bad. Ain't no niggas out of California been bad and ran nothing around here. When the men realized what Crippin' Bloods was, they ran them niggas out and tried to deal with the boys that were left behind. Yeah. Following them niggas that didn't know nothing about them niggas' streets. We wasn't gonna kill our own children, but them California niggas got their ass up out this motherfucker. Now we got our kids and our nephews and our grandbabies gang banging. We can't kill them. They following these dumb ass niggas. Our elders despise that shit. For sure. They despise it. They don't give a fuck about Nipsey Hussle, Raymond Why Who fuck that shit? Who the fuck a gangbanger? But what they won't tell us is Raymond Washington got away from the Crips because he didn't like guns. Wow. So the Crips killed him. But they honor him. But they don't tell us he didn't like guns. 
and he started moving more toward black liberation in the Black Panther Party ideologies. He wasn't subscribed to no motherfucking white boy street names. That's ultimately ran by Mexicans. Mm. So when that nigga said that, I already know what the spirit of California has. They don't have the spirit of us niggas down south. California forgot every nigga that started a gang in California come from down near here, from the south, Mississippi, Texas, Louisiana, Tookie Williams, Raymond Washington, all of those children who started sets up there are children from the south. The niggas that picked up gang banging, they ain't from down here. That's why they so goddamn weak. They can't chop wood. They can't fish. They can't do nothing. They jump on women. They hate black women. Them California niggas hate black women. Don't you hear Crip Max say 95% of bitches ain't nothing? Wow. Didn't you hear him say that? Mm -hmm. That's because his mama's with a white man. So he think bitches ain't shit. When you hear a man speak like that, that's the reflection of his mother. Man, I, I don't, man, I don't, no, man. I don't talk down on black women. I don't talk down on women, period. I talked to a punk ass nigga sitting on the internet watching, listening to somebody in their motherfucking feelings. And then got the nerve to say what you would do to somebody for talking. Yeah, he he definitely he was very keen to say uh, I set him up. And, yeah. that, and that was the reason I wanted to, you know, talk about and address it, because that's a serious statement to say, you know, the way he said it. I, I set him Man, up. Didn't you hear? The tone of his voice. Yeah, I heard it. He was real abnormal. He I, meant that. I set him up. See, but what happened when when you make that statement, you're in the you're you're in the heat of what you feel. Oh, his facial expression and oh, everything. Man. You seen it? He he's in the heat of what he feels. Once the feeling go, so that's this is why you shouldn't rely on your feelings. Once the feeling leave, that initial feeling has other feelings that's attached to it. Whether you admit it, whether you process it or not, you have to hear shame in the new video. I, I got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you do. They watch, shame let, now. Let, 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 watch, yeah. this, watch this. That's what's so. They shame now. Oh, oh, a nigga was just talking. You feel me? Talking <laughs> play it back. Play it back. Play it back. <laughs> Let me play it back. This, now, this is the second video where they they come together after again, they got the backlash. After they, after they got the backlash. After, after we made after, the video. After, yeah, after we made the boss talk she. video. He, here he come. Now, watch this. Here he go. Do you want to speak on it? Could they speak on it? I, I brought the, the the thing is is. First of all, a nigga was just talking. Oh, he sounds so humble. Yeah, to I don't it, care. Man. I mean, the thing is, I was just you talking with him. You set up another black I set brother? up Charleston White. You know, I was watching the nigga videos and shit, too, and I was like, I get the message. I hate niggas like him. I'm just trying I to understand. I hate them California I niggas. Like, Listen, like, now he get the message, but you didn't get the last interview? Well, he said he didn't even, he, he had listened to him before. He already, but now all of a sudden, because of the backlash, he say, okay, I wouldn't set him up. He know? on a white boy platform. Say I set a nigga up, and the world saw it. In the world, in the world, I got him in his feelings. And the world rebuked him. And the world rebuked. And the world rebuked him. And they rebuked that white boy. The man. white boy, man, that's something. I, I'm gonna say this because I gotta say this. When I seen the way uh, Adam Twenty Two, it had an Adam Twenty Two. Adam Twenty Two, no he, jumper, no jumper. Say. He reminded me of uh, Jerry Heller on Straight Outta Compton. I'm telling you, when I was watching him, because Jerry Heller, after they made that diss song on that movie Straight Outta Compton, he was like, we got to do something. How did they do this? Because he was trying to he make wanted to amp he, them he niggas wanted up, to yeah. To, he wanted to try to make sure he keep the control, see, see, over the situation with those guys. Because that's what Jerry Heller was doing. He was trying to keep that control. He, he was embarrassed for, for them even being... Cause they called him out. Like, oh, you when you were speaking, you said, uh, you said that's the the boss. They have to yeah. go to their boss, and and I could feel it in his spirit when he said that. When you said that, he felt some type of way because he was being exposed for really what was happening. Yeah, on that platform. I, I listened to the nigga say, uh, Google who he is and say, nigga, you a no name, Adam Jumper. 
is the motherfucker. The podcast don't say Adam 22 AD and the nigga sidekick. <laughs> it says Adam 22. That's that white boy's name on there. And he got them two niggas right there to help aid him. DA and payphone. The white boy Howard Stern, same thing. Nigga, your name ain't on there. I made my name big, nigga. I ain't got no white boy sitting next to me at the table. I treat white boys bad if they like Adam 22. They don't run nothing in this country. So what the fuck I'm going to be friends with a weak white boy like that for? I don't like liberal white boys, period. I'm a conservative nigga, and I like conservative Pecklewood, racist white folk who grandpappy, granddaddy, daddy, status own niggas. They understand us better than a nigga who ain't own, a white boy who ain't, people ain't own niggas. We play on them kind of white boys. The friendly white boy don't know a real how we really feel. We play on him. That redneck racist white boy know how we really feel. And we know how they, we got a better understanding with each other. A California white boy, we can't know, man. So when I see them niggas on there and they come back and double down on their words, yeah, bitch ass nigga, y'all knew you <laughs> nigga. Why, why, hey nigga, I stand on everything I say. I stand on this shit, man. So I mean what I say. And if I say something wrong and I'm wrong, fuck it. I want to be wrong. Man, well, you should know, nah, nigga, sometimes I want to be wrong. I don't give a fuck about being right. I ain't trying to be right in life. I'm just walking in purpose. And sometimes I'm going to be wrong doing that. Wow. Yeah. Um, when when, when I, I listened to him, because I, I was like, dang, man, when I seen it, I, I only reason I knew it because you had went live. I said, oh, dang, yeah. what's going on? Oh, they done responded. And... It was crazy to me, you know, that it seemed because you brought something up about him being on the white platform. He even mentioned the fact that we was black. Yeah. I don't know what that was about. I'm well, like, he's well, like, that's a black podcast. Well, here's the I'm thing. Like, what? White boys and white boys and, and black boys in California, they really live Dr. King's dream. That is one of the most free nigg niggas get the fuck on white hoes like it's the thing to do. White girls get to jump in niggas' laps. Why you think the Kardashians get to fuck all the niggas in California? That's the thing to do. Why you think they got all nigga babies? Even Bruce Jenner, come be a nigga. Get him a nigga. He turned, he, they, listen. They had so many niggas fucking them. The daddy say, fuck it. You can't beat them, join them. He, I want to be one too to get the dick. That, what's, give me some of that dick. He, he got him a nigga. Everybody reaching for that nigga's dick in California. The white boys reaching for it. The rich movie producers. So them niggas is some different kind of niggas. That's why it's so easy for them to kill another black man at such a rate that they do it. They are disconnected from their ancestors. They know nothing about history. Ain't no my brother talk down there. What set you from, cuz? What hood you represent? Ain't no my brother. Ain't no unity. Ain't no we all come together on Dr. King's birthday and march down. You better not come through my hood, nigga. So, because they're so divided as black people, they alienate themselves amongst their race. So they go befriend the Chinaman. They go befriend the Samoan. They go befriend the white boy. And they grow up in this multicultural, diverse state disassociated from who they are as a race. So when I see that nigga, I live there with them niggas. I walk by them every day, talk to them, work with them, grocery shop with them, and they ain't in touch with the roots of who they are. Gang culture supersedes race culture, race relations. It supersedes children's, the, the best interest of children. It supersedes the safety of a school playground. He talking shit about gangs is what he said. Well, he, he, he said we 
looked up that he was a crip something. Compton well, no, crip. no, I never looked some, that up. I didn't look it up. Somebody put it. Somebody put it in the comment that he could be a Compton crip. So I said, "Fuck Compton crip, nigga." Just I'm just fishing. <laughs> okay. I'm just trying to make a nigga mad, nigga, because I know you niggas go get mad, and I know you niggas ain't bad enough to come down here and do nothing. Okay. Yeah, come to California. You want me to book my own killing? You want me to pay for my own flight? Uber to my own death. Y'all ain't gonna send me no money. <laughs> y'all, I'm on, I'm on, all my death gonna be at my expense. I'm gonna bring my ass to y'all and y'all ain't gonna try to trick me? Man, fuck you, broke ass nigga. Nigga, please. Yeah, you niggas stay at the park, nigga. Wow. Yeah, wow. And, and yeah, nigga. Oh, and ain't no nigga in California got a big platform like the white boy, no jumper. Yeah. And I done tricked this white boy to be saying my name. You know, that's what, that's the whole game. He to got me. one like, of the biggest platforms in the world, and I'm tricking this white boy to speak and say my name. And he's like, well, he's, uh, he just talks. I don't think, yeah. He, the question he had asked, because I was like, man, really? He was like, uh, so he thought, he felt like, he was like, it's some nasty, you know, guys out here in LA. That's what he said. Well, no, 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 no. He said something about, uh, if 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 I think if I would come with the sheriff them with A D them, then uh it's nasty niggas everywhere. That's what I said. They see that see they though. listen, they, they really think it. they really think that California is the baddest place. Have you ever seen a California nigga come down here and be bad? No, nope. sir. They're not. not I don't you we ain't never I ain't never known for a California nigga to run a prison nowhere. No. When I hear about California niggas, when them niggas get past Arizona in the feds. They ain't tough in D.C. When them California niggas in the feds and they on that East Coast, they ain't tough. When they got to be somewhere in New York, Philadelphia, dealing with them Chicago niggas, them niggas ain't tough. They only tough close to California where the base of Crippin' Bloods are. But if they get away from that base, you start to see them niggas with them small legs and them big chest and them big arms. Them niggas really can't fight. They ain't swung no axe. You what what big black boxer y'all known come up out of Cali? Name one. They ain't got no history of known boxers like Philly, DC, Texas. They don't got that. No. Them niggas ain't no nah, homie. So they want us to believe from the movie Colors. That's how they got us. Hollywood helped them <laughs> niggas. They was aided by Hollywood, man. So they didn't do this on their own. They didn't just show up in our city and say we did. No, nah, nigga, they was aided. By Hollywood. Because Hollywood got the script from them niggas. They even broke back mountain. Wow. Yeah, them two crip niggas in the mountain together. They just <laughs> they, they just made it white boy. Then was two crip niggas went up in the mountains together and was fucking. Because they were cellmates. And they want to keep doing it out in the free world. So they went up in the mountains and done it. That's Charleston White. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I no, I'm saying I'm just sitting back. No, listening. but it, it's just crazy. Like I said, when I when I looked at the way uh, the way my guy man uh, AD he was trying to hold it down for him after that. He said, "I like uh, you know." He he, he he say he did a title say, "I like racist white boys." I love and, racist and, and, white yeah, boys. Yeah, yeah, I love it. And I'm like, what what is he homing into these things for? Oh uh, well, cause they love white people. They love California is a liberal state. Well, what is liberalism? Where do you think homosexuality birthed from? Liberalism. San Francisco. San Francisco. We all know that. Motherfuckers like man kissing man, woman kissing woman. That shit come up out of California. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, nah, homie, liberalism. So, they the ones... Looked in the closet and said, come on, y'all. Everybody come on out the closet. It's okay. We going to come out together. Those are liberal people. A conservative motherfucker say, y'all get y'all goddamn ass back in the closet and close the door. We don't need to know y'all in there. Mm -hmm. Stay in that motherfucker. And you go burn in hell. And go say that adamant. <clears throat> you can't say uh, gay people going to hell is what a conservative will say. That's my religious belief. Wow. So... They think it's okay to lay in bed with a white person in harmony. You ain't never seen a blue bird and a red bird flying together. Uh -uh. Nature don't do it. 
So why these niggas trying to force us to do it? The real white boy don't do it. The real black boy don't do it. So why are they trying to force us to do it? Wow. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna ask you this question about uh it's one more thing I wanted to ask you about. It was uh Adam twenty two says the thing that uh seemed to bow for him is that I'm a white guy who hangs out with black guys. Yeah, yeah. What what baffles me the most is <laughs> that the black guys is hanging out with the white guy and not mistreating him. They supposed it's supposed to be the while the two niggas is on the podcast talking to Adam. They supposed to have a black friend back at his house fucking his woman. Back at the house fucking his woman. Sound about right. Another nigga need to be fucking his sister. One of them niggas on the podcast need to been and borrowed some money from Adam and ain't paid him back. Somebody's supposed to take one of his car and drive it in the hood and keep it and say, make him have to say, man, bring me my car back. And then wreck it. You don't, you don't, you don't treat a white boy equally. That is so true, man. No, no man, I'm equally. not, you don't treat no white boy equally in our world. No, no, this Ain't is Ain't nowhere in the world we sitting at the table with the white boy and he get to be treated like us. He, when he can't talk and we listen. I couldn't, Adam couldn't be in the room with us. He could never talk. We're over talking. <laughs> Soon as he start talking, I'm going to talk because we don't want to hear what you got to say. You a white boy. Nigga, you can't say nothing amongst us. You got to let us mistreat you to be amongst us. Them the kind of white friends we got or go over there and be like your daddy and them. They got along better with our daddies. But if you coming over here to be with us, you got to be mistreated, white boy. That's the rules of being white and hanging with black. And if black hang, and if, listen, and if black hanging with white, black need to get bitch treated. That little boy was out there in 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 uh South Lake and he was at a sleepover with his white football team. And they made him drink pee and they put it on camera. Remember that? Yeah. He was crying like a motherfucker drinking that piss. Them white boys were laughing and chuckling and he was the only little black boy at the party drinking white boys piss. Couldn't have been me. No, nah, we already know to mistreat the white folk. While they in there trying to make everybody drink piss, we trying to fuck his sister. We stealing out his mama's jewelry box. We trying to find his daddy's gun to sit out the window so all the homeboys can come get it. No, nah, we ain't in there trying to play nothing. And we borrowing his Nintendo tapes and not returning them. We keeping country for all the sixth grade year. Man, white boy don't get treated equally amongst us. Unless we at work. That's the only way. If he go to jail, he ain't treated equally. So what I'm saying to Adam is, I'm baffled at the fact that these two niggas ain't fucking over you, white boy. Where they do that at? Yeah, nah, man, they should have been disrespected him in some kind of way with his woman. Pinched on her ass. Uh, grabbed her pussy when they get drunk and play like he didn't remember. You know how a drunk motherfucker do. Oh, I didn't remember. I was fucked up. I'm so sorry. I'm, yeah, you know how a drunk motherfucker do. Do the white boy like that. Boy, that's so real. He, he also, uh, Adam22 asks, what's the difference between him and Vlad? Anything you can say about me, you you could basically about say it about Vlad. I ain't never seen you, Vlad. You like Vlad, so I guess you rock with him. <laughs> Vlad ain't got a bunch of niggas on this platform. Vlad keep him one nigga at a time. And all good white boys keep him one good nigga. That's what I'm saying. All white boys keep him a good nigga. White boy can't make it in life without him one good nigga. Vlad get him one nigga at a time. Adam keep a bunch of niggas. Sometimes he got seven niggas at the table with him and two white hoes. He know them white girls want them niggas and not him. Wow. He know every, li listen, he know every time he put them white girls on there with them niggas, them, man, them white girls want them niggas. Yeah, he, in, yeah, he know that. Vlad get one nigga at a time. My kind of white boy. And he ain't nowhere in the room with you. My kind of white boy. Yeah, you ain't fit to, Vlad ain't fit to sit and inhale no niggas air, smell no niggas skin. Vlad is somewhere behind the screen interviewing you. Adam 22 all up in a nigga's face. Stinking with that white boy smell on him. With that wet dog smell on him. So why in the fuck them niggas kissing that white boy's ass? 
Fuck them niggas talking about homie. Them niggas done wow. forgot where they come from and who they are. Niggas. Wow. You know, that, and that's why, like I said, he said the the the, the motherfucking, uh, what did he say about the about the black podcast? I, I had to get Charleston back the in nigga, here. The nigga podcast. The nigga podcast. Yeah, the nigga you know? podcast. That's why I brag about raping the white girl we used to rape out there in all this. We thought it was running the train. <laughs> we thought it was running the train. Say, I'm next. She just want to sleep with one of us, but it's five of us. So in order for her to sleep with the one, she got to sleep with the five. That's how the rules go. Lo and behold, they love it. Yeah, lo and behold, a white woman loved to be beat up before she got to have sex with. They made a whole book about it called Fifty Shades of Grey. I seen that movie. Yeah, so I, I learned early in life. Nigga, you ain't, you ain't really got to ask the white girl for some pussy. You can just walk up and take it. President Trump said it. I walk up to them and grab their pussy. I don't ask them nothing. And they love it. And he didn't apologize for it. You can't do a black woman like that, but the white woman you can. And Adam them know that. Them white bitches that get freaky and fuck everybody. He know his woman to do that. He know that. Wow. So so one last thing. I got to ask you this. Seem like you're trying to divide Texas and California. I am. I'm trying to divide the world against California. Not just Texas, Oklahoma, Mississippi, Alabama. I'm trying to divide black people against the Crips and the Blood. And if that's California, so be it. But it's against the Crips and the Bloods. I ain't said nothing about Oakland. I ain't said nothing about San Diego. I said something about Crips and Bloods. They stood with the Asians against me. I remember that. They stood with them with the Asians against me. I mean, done it in more than one video. So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to turn the all 50 states against California if I can. If them niggas come to our states, don't come with that cripping blood shit, nigga. You nigga, when you niggas leave outside that motherfucking California state, nigga, be on your best behavior, nigga. Leave that shit. Don't come here with that shit. We gonna have stricter laws for California niggas. I got a nigga rob them every time they come down here. Cause he thought they was bad and tough. Till one day during a drug transaction, they was talking a big California talk and a little Texas talk. And he said, I'm robbing this nigga this time. And what he told me, he said, man, when you put them guns in them niggas faces, nigga, they cooperate too. They don't wanna die. They talk that crip for die. They don't wanna die, my nigga. Them niggas get naked just like everybody else when you tell them to. They don't want to die. They talk that shit. Wow. So, nah, homie, so they, this is the first time ever in history that anybody have ever stood up to the Crips and the Bloods. And with, I could say I've never heard that. Before. Without fear. Without fear. Without fear. Wow. I know cowards. I know cowards running packs. Wow. Yeah. That's some real talk, man. Charleston White, man. Hey, man. So, man, um, I think the Nipsey thing, they keep throwing that out there in a way to where to try to make that the narrative. Man, fuck Nipsey. That's what they keep yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah. I don't give a damn about the dead. How the fuck all of you disrespectful motherfuckers go wake up every day and throughout your day disrespect the living, hate the living, but you so honor the dead whom you don't know. You disrespectful to your mother. You disrespectful to your neighbor. You disrespectful to the kids whom you walk past with your sagging pants and your dick and your ass showing. You disrespectful to the women at the gas station when they walking into the store, you cussing on the phone or you and your homeboys talking what you're talking. Y'all some very disrespectful motherfuckers in your daily lives. But you got so much respect for the dead. Wow. You shouldn't honor the dead. They say you can't speak on the dead. They a lying motherfucker. You know that little dash in between your birthday and the date you die, that dash give everybody authority to speak on you. That's why that dash is there, nigga, how you done lived. Wow. Your legacy. You left these actions behind mm. for people to speak on. When they great actions, you speak on them. When a man dies and he's left the world with great actions, we speak on his great action. We give him holidays. So how is it that we can speak when they great, but not 
when they fail, when they shamed, because he died a dope fiend. Yeah. Because he was killed by his own set. I wonder why nobody talks about the fact that Nipsey Hussle was killed. He was a rolling 60, killed by a rolling 60 in the presence and in the hood of rolling 60s. Nobody speaks about that. Why wouldn't the people be mad at rolling 60s? Why don't nobody shame the 60s? Wow. Why don't nobody talk about the fact that this man had made it out of the ghetto, but because he couldn't let go of the hood, it became his demise. Wow. He got killed in front of a stove with niggas standing around. So when you look at Nipsey Hussle, he died shameful in the hood, nigga, by his own set. Wow. When you look at Irmis, Octagon or whatever his name is, you see a remarkable young man who his woman speak highly of, who his mother speak highly of, said he had a different kind of energy, a glow, an array about himself before he passed. And then this seven-year-old kid comes up to the microphone before the world and says, last night, Irmis came to me in a dream and he was in heaven. Whoa, this is a kid talking. Fuck what Farrakhan them saying. Fuck what Stevie Wonder singing about. Fuck what Anthony Hamilton just sung. This seven-year-old kid, what did he see in that dream? He saw Irmis. So it hit me in the middle of that funeral. We in this motherfucker smoking weed with Nip listening to this foolish music they playing at this man's funeral. When I walked down in front of the family, they wasn't there for Nip, homie. They was mourning the fact that Irmis is gone. They wow. wasn't smoking weed like us. Wow. So I, I left knowing nothing about Nipsey and learning everything about Irmis. Wow. So what made you go to the funeral? Uh, to say nan nanny boo boo to the crippin' blood niggas in Texas cause I'm the only nigga in Texas that got to go to the funeral I got to go with the rolling 60s I sat behind the family in the movie star yeah yeah and then I fuck with them original crip niggas so my, my eight trade partner Skull said hey man I might be speaking at Nipsey's funeral homie you wanna come go with me you had to be from California to have a ticket I had just moved back I had just moved back from California uh, so I had been talking shit to the city saying why y'all celebrating this nigga Nipsey Hussle? Nigga, we got Nipsey Hussles around here. So I was already on the, nigga, hold on. How y'all, nigga, there's people die all the time. What the fuck? So that's what made me want to go. So I also wanted to go to tell these local Crip and Blood niggas, you niggas ain't connected like me in California. Y'all can't go. And I went with the sick, we, I, we didn't even have tickets. We stormed our way in. We parked next down to Bentley Trucks before, nigga. Man, I saw some shit that I had never seen. Wow. I saw how powerful them Crips really is. They really run shit. In California? Yeah. To a certain degree. Uh, so after the funeral, I got left in the, in the rolling 60s neighborhood at the main house. Before I realized I was there by myself. Kind of like the movie Training Day. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing guys say, say, who who it could? Oh, man, that's, that's Skull, partner. He from Texas. Shit, what's up with him? Before I look around, Skull gone. Skull is an A-Tray gangster crip, which is rolling 60s rivals. I'm left here in these niggas' neighborhood, homie. Uh, my behavior and way I conducted myself, you know, left an impression upon them. I don't know nobody. I don't know nobody. But I'm fearless, and 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 I and I'm and I'm looking and observing and paying attention. So they befriended me, uh, and 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 we became pretty close. So I know they feel some kind of way about the things that I say, but they not on this journey with me. See, a lot of people get left behind. Man, I done been around the world twice in one year in, in knowledge, 
in knowledge. So what I speak on, I speak on what's against us. And when, as, a, as a black man who work with children as a youth advocate, when I look out into American society, the greatest problem we face in this country is gangs. That's our number one enemy. Our number two enemy is fatherless homes. Wow. That's our number two enemy. I think a lot of times, like I say, when I when I hear people criticize or talk, they don't do their research properly on who you really are. They look at the most of them are gravitating to you for the truth, but there's a lot to Charleston White when it's a lot to unpack. When you're looking at the whole, you know, movement, the whole evolution, you got to be real. You got to be in in tune to be able to see it, man. They yeah, they not man. ready for that. Yeah. You got to stop what you're uh, doing. You're, no, you don't. Uh, well, no, I, no, you I, don't. I, I'm willing to be a bullshit nigga anytime, right? So uh, at any time, I might just say anything because a motherfucker asking me a stupid question. So what what they see is they see me on social media reflecting what's before me. They see me on social media. I'm on here trying to talk about an issue. But as I'm looking, I got people before me. Fuck you, bitch ass nigga. Fuck you, snitch ass nigga. So rather than me trying to be righteous in my speaking, I reflect our culture back to us. Meaning, if I get invited to speak at a country club, I don't talk nigga talk at the country club. If I get invited to speak at the Texas Parole and Probation Annual Conference, I don't talk nigga talk. But boy, when I'm in front of black folk, I'm talking nigga talk because they don't understand nothing there. Nothing else. Yeah, they don't. They, they don't understand nothing there. So, but what they want is they want you to speak to them in the manner of which their mothers raised them. They want to be coodled. That's why most black people can't handle the truth. Normally, if you tell a black person the truth, y'all end up fighting. Yeah. So people avoid telling us the truth. Yeah. Our mothers, our sisters, our brothers, our friends, our coworkers. Because if you tell us the truth, we might hurt you. Wow. Wow. Man. Charleston White, man, another hey man, this one right here, boy, hey, I I, I every time I, you don't miss with Charleston. That's a good one. Yeah. You you can't miss with it, man. And everything that you do, man, I, like I said, Everybody need to stop and tune in because it's some truth that can evolve. It can, it can, you can get something from it. Yeah. See, see, a lot of people talking. You can't get that. I said this the last time we interviewed. You got to get with somebody you can get something from, man. And I know you say, "Hey, man, I ain't here for you. Here for the youth, really." Yeah. That, that's what, I know what you stand for, and that's what we should all be standing for because that's what really matters. Yeah. Uh, everybody who got a problem with what I do and what I say. Nine times out of 10 are poor, mostly are miseducated, 90% are uneducated, and 99.9% .9 of them don't do a motherfucking thing in the black community. So I don't give a fuck about what a motherfucker say about me. You ain't done what I done done. You ain't done what I done done. And I'm a bad motherfucker at this. I'm a bad, and I know it. I, was, I walked downtown at city council meetings and city hall around white folks as if I'm bad. Most niggas get around white folks and can't even talk. Most niggas get in front of a judge and can't even stand up straight, hold their head up, and talk with confidence. So, I keep telling everybody, if you watching me and you feel some kind of way, you've been played. <laughs> you've been played. Say, check it, man. Hey, <laughs> man. I'm, hey, man. We go. We go leave with leave you with that right there, man. Appreciate you for coming on the show. We love you, man. Oh, man. Anytime, homie. Check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk One Hundred and One.